whispering in the trees. It's two cities and they're only... And at this time, we would like to welcome in the author of the new book, Off the Street. He is Detective Christopher, Christopher Bauman. His work has been featured on NBC's Dateline Undercover to Catch a Predator and American Greed. He has served as an expert for the CSI Las Vegas television series and teaches pandering investigations to police departments across the country, including the FBI, IRS, and other federal agents. He is the author of the true crime book, Off the Street. And Detective, welcome into the Preacher's uh, radio show. I'm Michael D. Stewart. How's it going? It's going great. I'm honored to be on. Thank you for having me. No problem. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I know we had you scheduled for a little bit earlier. Thank you for your patience with us as we had our Indiana Attorney General uh, in the studio. So we were talking a little out of uh, things with the Super Bowl happening this year in Indianapolis. Yes. And they were talking about the uh, increased number of uh, trafficking, uh, sex trafficking that will probably happen that you see in those uh, big events. So they're talking about that. But uh, Christopher, uh, Detective Christopher, uh, I, I'm very interested. I was look, oh, I was uh, called in on substitution, so I was doing a little quick research on you. And you have a very interesting uh, life. Uh, you you came from a pretty rough background, correct? I did. We uh, we moved to Vegas when I was about nine years old. We left. I was born in Cincinnati. We moved there, went to Denver, and I landed here when I was nine. <clears throat> when I got here, it was a whole other world for me. You know, we moved from pretty much from one really bad neighborhood to the next, uh, all the way through up until I was about 18 years old. So saw a lot, experienced a lot, learned quite a bit about the men that I now hunt down. Um, so, you know, I can't complain. I'm, I'm here today because of, you know, because of what, where I grew up, I feel not in spite of it, you know. And with that background, is that, I mean, at an early age, did you decide to, that you wanted to, you know, get involved in the police? How did you uh, decide to join the police force? It's a funny story. I, um, for me, I really, growing up where I grew up, I really never wanted to be an officer because I just saw, what I saw didn't make me want to become one. You know, I saw a lot of brutality. Um, I didn't like the way that they treated people. So when you, you know, when you come from a background like mine, the police necessarily, or are not necessarily your friends. Um, mm -hmm. I thought I would maybe be a social worker you know, maybe work at Parks and Rec, doing programs for kids, that kind of thing. What ended up happening was my dad told me, you know, he's like, you're going to go become a detective. And I'm like, uh, I don't want to do that, Dad. I want to I want to help kids and make the neighborhood a better place. That's what I want to do. And he's like, well, you're going to do that, but it's going to be as a detective. That's what you're supposed to do. And you, so, and you became a detective. Uh, you joined the force in 1999, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. And yeah. uh, so uh, this book that we're talking about, Off the Street, um, Let's let people know what this book is all about. I mean, it's basically the uh, de dealing with the human sex trafficking. It is. Um, the book was written basically the last straw for me. Um, you know, I became a police officer in 99. I became a detective about two years later and worked in a gang unit for about four years until I got recruited to, to come to, to Vice to deal with, with trafficking issues here in the city um, of Las Vegas. Well, what happened was we recently had a victim who was around 30 years of age. She met a, um, an individual at a jazz concert. Now, this guy um, told her that he was a pimp, but, you know, with the way things are in our time, uh, in, in today's day and age, we hear that word all the time and we don't think twice about it, and that was kind of what happened with her. Um, he, was a, he was a charming guy, super nice, seemed to tell her everything she wanted to hear, but the, the interesting thing about this particular case was that this woman was in her 30s, and she was a professional. She had been to college. She was a doctor. Hmm. Um, this guy basically tried to systematically take control of her life by isolating her from friends, from family, monitoring who she could call, who she couldn't call, when she could call them, uh, basically all the strategies that they, that they often employ, and up to the point where he told her that you're going to stop being a doctor, you're not making enough money, doing that for me, this is what you're going to do. Now, people would think, why didn't she just call the police? Well, she didn't call the police because during the getting to know you stage of that relationship, this individual was doing all kinds of intel gathering on this young lady. He was finding out where her mother and father lived at, finding out, you know, where her sister went to school. Um, where does your mom work? Where does your dad work? Where does your grandma live? Let's go have, let's go have Thanksgiving dinner with your grandmother. So, you know, he courted her for several, several months before he, tried to turn her. Uh, once he tried to turn her, 
you know, he, he'd already started um, abusing her with, uh, with violence. Uh, when he tried to turn her, she said, I can't do it. That was when he threatened to hurt her family, to hurt her grandmother if she didn't comply. What happened was he called her doctor's office, uh, where she worked at, and started to tell, try to get her fired by telling them that she was a prostitute when she's not there, and you know what kind of person you're hiring. You know, this, this woman's no good, she's, she's trash, and I'm going to let everyone know that you've got a, you know, you've got a, um, a prostitute working at your practice. Well, when she went in, her friends there asked her what's going on, what's wrong, and that was kind of when we got involved. But that was the, the story that sparked me to write the case, um, that, to write off the street, which is not that, not that case, but it's the first case that we worked as a unit. Now, um, well, and it sounds like I mean, just reading on these things, and I know as a um, as a person that has helped out with the CSI show, was that the was there was that episode? I think it was called Lost Girls. Is that the episode that you helped out with? Or was no, the, the the episode that I helped with was uh, was was entitled. Uh, it was a crossover episode, and I and I believe it was. Well, I can't remember the name of it. It was a crossover episode. Basically, what happened was there were body parts coming up in different. Yeah, episodes. it was on all three of the episodes, and the final was, one. Yeah, because right. there was a. She was a weather. I think the uh, the actress right. was a weather exactly. woman, and she got involved. And I, I think it was called Trilogy or something yeah, like that. Yeah, because it went on all the Miami and. Uh, mm -hmm. But because I know that when as soon as I started reading about you here, I was like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> that sounds like that, sounds that familiar, story, right? and and it's just really interesting for people out there to. Um, Basically, these women get all their all their escape doors, in essence, get trapped. I mean, like well, you said, threatening the family. Um, you see cases of also with, uh, you know, drugs involved as well to kind of hinder their thought processes. Sure, we've seen drugs. You know, things are changing. And, and the, the, the guys that we are hunting here that, you know, you should be concerned about there with the Super Bowl coming. Um, you, you should be concerned regardless because this is happening everywhere. And it's happening, you know, we're seeing girls getting, getting sucked into this as young as 12, 13, 14, women all the way up to 30. But what's happened is drugs aren't playing as big of a part as they used to because these people need to be able to sell these, these women. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing that drugs do do to people, it's deteriorate them quickly. You know, so it's bad enough that we've got girls or women having to go out every night and sell themselves. We, we understand that, but on top of that, when you you know when you introduce cocaine or heroin or some other type of drug, now you're dealing with um, all kinds of all kinds of other issues. Deterioration or their teeth are messing up, and, and their skin com you know uh, skin complexion is is not right.